Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, we're going to be continuing with the Photon Multiplayer Tutorial Series. In this video, we've got two main goals. Goal number one is to add name tags or nameplates above other players. We're not going to bother adding it above ourselves, though you can do that if you want to. It just gets in the way. And then secondly, we're going to actually fix a problem from last time, which is that the bullets aren't correctly synchronized across the client. So we're going to sort that out as well. Now let's get to the video. But of course, first I got to thank my patrons, so special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, CZ, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my patrons down below. If not, there are also links down below to social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. So the first thing to do is show you where we were at. So if I go into my Unity engine and go find Ponan, and let's make this a bit bigger, and then we go to the client I'm running separately and press continue, find opponent, and you'll notice they match and they get into a game. Now, technically at the moment they spawn on each other, but as you see, if I move around, you can see me moving around. Um, obviously it's not 100% synced. And you notice one problem is that it kind of, uh, when I move left and right, it lurps on the top because it's trying to synchronize the change. It doesn't just snap. So that's one thing we're gonna fix, as I said. And that also um, is part of the problem with the shooting. As you, If you're looking on the top screen right now, are you looking at this player here, which is me at the bottom? If I shoot, it's obviously shooting to left. If I go to the right, it shoots to the right. The problem is, what if I shoot on the way? If I shoot on the way, you see on the bottom one, I'm just snapping to the side, right? But on the top, it's going wherever it, the forward is at that time. Because what's happening is at the moment, we're using RPCs to raise a function call on the other client. The problem is that's networked and that takes time. And by the time it's told to do that, it is somewhere else. And the problem is the bullets just, you know, go off wherever. So we need to do it a different way. Now, the way I'm going to do it now, and I, haven't, I don't know of a better way of doing it currently, and I'm going to do some research on it, but the way uh, that will work, I just don't know if it's the most performant, is to use photon views, which are essentially um, ways to sync things. So, you know, we have a photon view on this player here, so when I move and rotate, it moves and rotates on the top one. And we can do that with buttons, so that one client controls the actual moving of it, and then the other clients just listen, well, not listening, sorry, they... Uh, try and sync with it. Now, it doesn't sound like the most performant option because if you have tons of projectiles everywhere, you know, you want a better way to handle that kind of thing. So we will um, handle that separately at some other point. We'll make it even better, but we just want a temporary fix now so that it's actually accurate. Um, and we can also lerp the rotation of our plate at the bottom anyway so that he rotates smoothly rather than snapping like that anyway. So let's go into step one, which is to actually just do the name tags first. That doesn't take that long. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a player name tag mono behavior, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to change it from mono behavior to mono behavior pun, so that we can put this on the player and access the photon view component. There are other ways that you could just leave it as a mono behavior and get it manually, but that's what mono behavior pun does for you. And then we can just check, you know, if the photon view belongs to us and so on. So what we want to do really is on start, we want to say if the photon view dot is mine, but obviously you want this to be false. So I guess we can say if it's mine, then return. Okay. Otherwise we can call set name and then we can do this and go uh, control dot enter to make a function for it. And this function uh, simply needs reference to a text component to change. So we're going to make a serialized field private text mesh pro UGUI and just call it a uh, name text. Okay. And then down here on set name, we can set name text equal to. And then we need to figure out basically who this photon view uh, belongs to, because obviously if it's us, then we don't want to do it. But if someone else is, then we do it to them. So the name text is the photon view dot uh, owner. So that's a player dot nickname. OK, uh, and then sorry, the photo name text dot text, because that's the string like that. And um, we can just put that into a expression like this. So, and I get rid of these actually. And that's it simply, a uh, name tag has the text to change and it just handles, well, don't change it if it belongs to us, but if it's anyone else's, then, you know, set it to be their nickname. Okay, now that's it for the code. It's obviously really simple. And then back in Unity, you wanna go and put this on your player. Now, if you wanna put it on the name tag, for example, you can, but you'll have to be able to reference the photon view, uh, like you have to be able to drag it in as a parameter because the way I'm doing it, just making it simple uh, for the name tag, is just, um, it'll grab this one. Okay, now next is to actually do the little bit of UI to set the name tag, so let's get to that. So for this, we're gonna need to add a canvas to the player, so add a UI canvas. But this canvas, we'll just call it the, um, like the uh, canvas for the name tag, and then we'll make it a world space UI. 
and the scalar doesn't really need to exist. I mean, actually, yeah, it's fine to leave as is. The raycaster we don't need. Which one? A world space canvas, pretty simple. And then on here, we can start adding some UI. Uh, so we can add, for example, some text from the text mesh pro and this name thing. Okay, we need to put it at zero, zero. Obviously it's huge. Then we can just, uh, we can even, we can just scale it down if you don't want to like shrink the width and the height. So you could go for like 0 0.01, whoops. 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001. And then we'll set the Y to be above the head maybe. So two or maybe 1.5. Okay, and this canvas text, let's just stretch it. Now this is font size 36. I think we've probably shrunk the canvas a bit too much. So let's double its size, okay. But then we can actually go into press T and we can just manually do this. We can go like, let's say we want it to be like this big maybe above the player. So it'd be zero, 1.5. We will fix a problem in the second, which is obviously the direction of the text, but no need to worry about that right now. So this is the uh, text underscore name tag. Okay. Uh, let's go to Q. Okay. And then here we want to just say, oh, do it in the center and uh, resize it if the name's too big. But let's say the uh, max size can be, I don't know, 200. So if we see a player, then, you know, it, it's really up to you to design this. I'm not going to spend much longer designing it, though I am going to quickly shrink this a bit more, I reckon, actually. We don't want it to be that big. Um, okay, yeah, 0, 1.5, or even 1.25 now. Sounds a bit better. Let's make these nice values, 850, 160 or something. And then the text could be like, you know, player name, for example. And then that's it, right? We can have a player name hovering above the player. Let's not get into the details. That's fine how it is right now. I'm happy with that. And what we're gonna do is then we're gonna say on the player, the name text is inside the canvas, the text name tag, and there we go. So now this works, okay? We, it will work, but the problem is this will rotate with the player, right? We want this to rotate independently uh, to always face the camera, okay? So we're gonna have to write a little script to face the camera. This is like a script that you'll probably use in lots of games. You'll have things facing the camera. Uh, I've written it multiple times, so I'm just gonna write it again. I might actually, I'm just gonna write it out and then show you rather than typing it out as we go along. I'll give a quick rundown of how it works, but yeah, let's get to that. Okay, so I've made a billboard script. Now billboard is what people call um, the kind of things that are just kind of flat and facing the camera, they're always looking at you. That's just the, the term, at least from what I found. Um, and what we wanna do is we want to cache the camera. So let's try, oops. Oh, uh, I'm outside the class, my bad. Uh, inside the class, we want to cache the camera. So we're gonna say a private camera, uh, main camera or something. And then in the start, we're gonna say main camera is equal to camera.main. And to be honest, actually, we don't even need the camera. We just need the camera transform. So let's actually just store a transform, main camera transform. And we can set this to be the main, the camera's main transform. And then every late update from a late update happens every frame, but after the normal update tick. So this will be after everything else has already moved and rotated because we want this to face the player after they've moved it. It's a uh, kind of order of execution. So we want to say, well, transform, because this is going to be on the actual UI dot look at, which is a built-in function to look at a vector, but you also can pass in uh, world up because um, if you don't pass in world up, it might not actually rotate how you want it to, because it can still look at your vector um, but be like flipped, for example. It's hard to explain, but anyway, uh, we're gonna want to look at, well, our current position plus the camera's rotation uh, times forwards, because we only want the, uh, the forward cam the forward direction of the camera. So it's the main camera transform uh, dot rotation times vector free dot forward. And then over here, we want to say the main camera transform dot rotation times by vector free dot up because that's the second parameter here which is the uh, world up which is the camera's rotation upwards so that's what we want basically and that's it now all we need to do is go back to unity and put this onto uh, either the canvas or the text because look you can actually you can rotate the text or you can rotate the canvas now i can't actually remember really if there's a benefit to doing either i'm going to go ahead and rotate the canvas to be honest um because if we had any other thing else on here, like a health bar, for example, that health bar will also want to face the camera. So that's it, to be honest. Now, when we run the game, that'll actually work. But the only way we can really test that is if we 
Um, well, actually, we, can, we can't test it until we build. Um, but what we can do, actually, is we can just uh, press play. And I'm going to go ahead and go open the built version, which the other one won't work because I haven't built the code. But because this one will work, um, I'll, I'll see the name on this client, but not on the other one. So if I go to uh, whoops, uh, game builds, photon tutorial, run it. And I go continue, find opponent, and we run this. And we go continue, find opponent. We can't see any names on here, but if I go over here, I can see player name and YouTube. So obviously the problem is I have a, I need to reset the string back to like an empty string for a default value. Uh, or even in the script, if it's uh, us, we can just set it to an empty string. But I'd rather just have it default as an empty string. And you can see that's YouTube. I know who the... Oh, I just fell off. <laughs> well, we know who it is anyway. Um, so let's go do the final fixes and push that and build it. Okay, I'm back with the built versions. And all I did was I um, essentially remove the string value for the text to just be blank by default so when i go around now i don't have my own name but i can see dappers over there and obviously if i look around here i can see youtube's over there so now we've got name tags for the enemy so we know who we're looking at now maybe you want to change that to be oh we only see their name tag if we're looking at them or whatever right but this is just a simple implementation of how you can do that so that works now we're going to end the video off by doing the uh, fixing of the rotation so rather than fixing the rotation, we're actually just going to do the photon view thing I said earlier in the video. So if we go to our projectile script that we're going to be spawning in, we'll add a photon view component. And we want to uh, have a transform view. And we want to sync position. And I mean, we don't need to sync rotation because at the moment we don't even see rotation on the projectile. So for this one specifically, we'll turn off rotation. It will help with performance. We just want to sync where we are. And the scale doesn't change either, so we don't need to worry about that. And we're going to say we're going to observe this component. Uh, and then rigid body will obviously handle the actual moving of it when it's got force and it's going through the air. And that's fine. We don't need to sync that rigid body or anything, just this. And we save that. We go back and then we go to the weapon script. And instead of what we're doing here, which is we are calling this RPC function and, you know, whatever, whatever. All we actually want to do is, well, take input is only happening for us. And if we do this, we then want to fire projectile. So let's get rid of this and we just call fire projectile. Okay. And when we fire the projectile, uh, instead of instantiate, we want to say photon network dot instantiate. Okay. Now you can't actually call instantiate with a prefab. You have to call the prefab name because it spawns it from resources. So we just have to say projectile dot name. So we can still drag it as a uh, prefab reference in the editor, which helps us rather than typing out a string and getting it wrong and all that lot. But it, it means also that this knows what to do. And then we want to spawn in at the right rotation and the right uh, position. And then we set the velocity. And obviously, we're only setting it on our own computer now. This only happens for us, meaning that the, own, the syncing on the other computers is through this instantiate syncing and through the photon view. So if we go back and we go build and test it out, then we'll see the result. OK, let's connect the two together. Uh, I'm going to move over here so we can see on the top screen and I'm going to shoot and notice how we have the projectile on both. Now one thing that looks a bit odd is um, even though these projectiles are now all going in the right direction, like they are synced a lot better than they used to be, um, it's still kind of problematic because of the uh, when I turn obviously on mine it's instant because I didn't tell it to lerp but on the top it does lerp so I'll have a look into that for the next time. Uh, it's not really problematic, it doesn't affect the gameplay, it's just a visual problem now because as you see it doesn't matter where we're facing those projectiles all go off in the exact same way. You know, you can see those are in the exact same spread. Um, obviously, I'd have to stand in the same position for you to see that properly. But yeah, this works. So we've got name tags and we fixed the projectile spawning. So whatever you guys want to know how to do next, then feel free to leave in the comments down below. If you like the video, then feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Go check out my Discord channel below, all the social media help a lot. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.